Hey, all y'all. Right here today, Zeke, born to be fired.com. Of course, I fired myself having a real nice cigar called the Illusions, the Esteli Illusion. And uh, I'm very thankful they're out here, and it's folks like Dale Ferguson here. Fayette of Cigars, uh, 137 East Main Street in Lexington, Kentucky, that helps us all have the righteous cigar moment in our life. Hey, Dale, it's very nice to see you again. Good to see you. And I still see you got your cousin around. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Old faithful. <laughs> the Scottish Native American. Yeah, that's right. You know, here, I had to let him have some. He had been wanting some for a while. <laughs> He was kind of stuck in one spot. Yeah. So, so, so Dale, tell us about your shop here. Uh, essentially, we probably existed in my family since uh, about 1928. But the store itself has actually existed in one form or another since about 1864 here in Lexington. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, yeah, it's been around forever, yeah. You all help fire a lot, have them fire themselves. Yeah, fire that's themselves it, yeah. Back up their cigar. <laughs> that's My a long time. Gosh, you got a little bit of everything in here, even other than cigars. Yeah, it just kind of uh, escalated and uh, start my brother and I in the 60s, and we just kind of kept adding and adding and adding and, and uh, finally ended up with all of this. You've got it all. And I love some of those postcards you have, especially that one that's a close up of a horse's eye. Yeah. That's great. And I'm not going to tell you all about the horses. I just got to stop in here at Dale's mm -hmm. place and check it out for yourself. <laughs> yeah. And then mm -hmm. tell us about your building here. Wasn't this a bank vault or something like that? This, we moved into this location in 67 uh, from down from one block away on Main Street. And this is, uh, a, was restored as a bank building in the 20s. And, of course, it bellied up in 29 was known as the phoenix national bank the phoenix hotel which is where all the horse people stayed uh was directly across the street if you went out our front door and directly across the street you went into the phoenix hotel so that's uh, uh kind of the building itself the front half was built about 1860 then the second uh, where we got three thirds the second third was built in around the turn of the last century and then this last half was built for the bank, which is used for the cigar. cigar. Hey, you gotta keep it good somewhere, believe me. Dan's got enough cigars in there that he needs a boat. Oh my god. How many cigars you generally keep up? No clue. <laughs> no clue, because there's so many of them. He's born to be fired. <laughs> I can tell you, if y'all have a cigar you have in mind, and you can't find it here, you lost your mind, because he's got them all. He'll help you sort through your mind. He will help you find that cigar so you can live that born to be fired lifestyle moment. And don't forget, therapy. Born to be fired therapy. When it comes to people relaxing, Dale, how would you explain smoking cigarettes? Cigarettes versus cigars. Cigarettes, cigarettes are nervous tension. And, and it really is. And you watch the way any individual smokes a cigarette and they puff it fast and furious. And if they're really badly uh, addicted, I would say, and I hate to use that word. Uh, I didn't hear. They will just, they will even sometimes light two at the same time. Be smoking one and set it down and turn up and light another one. And, and that's nervous tension. And a cigar, you just... Uh, you smoke it for an hour, an hour and a half, and, and uh, you just relax. You just, I mean, after about 20 minutes, I don't care how tense or uptight you are, you just unwind. And that's the great thing about a cigar. Pipe's the same thing, but it's, it's you almost have to be a type A personality and like to really do things with your hands and kind of fiddle with something constantly. So that's, that's the downfall of a pipe. I enjoy a pipe, but uh, uh, you can't beat a cigar. 
I've never smoked a pipe. I'm strictly cigars. <laughs> fire it up, smoke it. But first, you got to fire yourself. Remember not to take life so seriously. That's true. <laughs> it's too and short. Then, and then let life filter into you. Just fill, fill, your, fill yourself up with light. Yes. And how would you explain cigars to the novice that has thought about it but didn't know how to go there? I think too too often, particularly the kids today, they, they start up what we affectionately call the uh, candy cigars, the Cisher Sweets and all the flavored uh, homogenized leaf tobacco uh, uh, cigar, cigars. And they'll come wandering in, and, and once I can get my hands on them and explain them the facts of life to them, about what a cigar is and what a candy cigar is uh, and let them get into cigars and explain each time educate them a little more on the cigar what's involved with it and uh, get them coming back to learn a little more and after about four, three or four months and, and get them completely educated so they can go back into the cigar room and knowledgeably pick out a, a good cigar the one that they like how important would you say having a cigar feels good in your hand it's it, you do you just it's just some shapes you just and they say well how do I pick a shape and initially I'll tell them well get a shape by how how much time you have a robusto a nice short one if you only have a short amount of time a Churchill if you have a long a long amount of time I said but you'll come down to a shape when you can just sit down and enjoy it a shape that you like and I and they said what will that be and I said I don't know that's going to be your choice you have to decide that. You can't tell, you know. Have you ever noticed, when, like for instance, a box cigar versus any other cigar uh, or someone's into torpedoes or what have you, what have you noticed about individuals like the box versus a torpedo or what have you? It's hard to say. Uh, we don't really go into too many pressed cigars. I mean, we don't have a lot of customers that smoke them. We have quite a few press cigars, but but uh, most of our volume is a traditional cigar. You might remember um, a trilogy cigar from all. It was a Bradley cigar, I think, and yeah. from about uh, four or five years ago. It was triangular pressed. That made sense because it was so easy to hold. You couldn't give that cigar. <laughs> it, was just, it was a natural shape, mm -hmm. just to hold. I, I think. Pressed box cigars, pressed cigars are difficult to hold, in my estimation. Wonder if Coach Phil Jackson and his triangle offensive. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. Phil there, he likes his cigars <laughs> and a triangle offense. You think any of that came from that? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's stretching it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so born to be fired. Oh, my. So when it comes to men smoking cigars, women smoking a cigar, what have you noticed is the difference between the two smoking a cigar? Because we got a lot of women that are curious, and I, I try to help as many women as I can embrace that moment of a righteous cigar. A woman in a woman who smokes a cigar will, will be very specific, and the ones that we we have one little uh, uh, jockey trainer that comes in. And uh, the first time she came in, very young, probably in her late 20s, maybe early 30s, at stretching it, early 30s even, uh, came in and, and I asked if she needed help in the cigar humidor because I assumed, like an idiot, that she was going to be buying them for her boyfriend or her husband. You sexist pun. Yes, I was. Oh and, my and she God. said, no, I know my way around. I, well, you know. I didn't, I didn't say anything. She came back with a $200 worth of cigars and was knowledgeable on them all. Uh, impressive. Yeah, I mean, I was very impressed, and, and she still makes it a point to, to and I, I don't make, I don't make that mistake twice. That this time, I, I just hand her the, the key to the cigar room and said, "Help yourself." <laughs> <laughs> and she, she, does, and and you know, a woman who smokes a cigar generally is very specific, and she knows exactly what she wants. Well, what about the woman that doesn't know what she wants and is thinking about it, or let's say men, for instance, that really want the woman in their life to just sit, have a little bourbon or some rye, maybe a beer of wine, whatever they like, and, and join them for a cigar. How could a man go about that? That's a good question. Uh, and I would be hard pressed 
to say it would be almost up to the individual woman on, on how he could approach her, uh, their relationship. You know, I, mm -hmm. I know uh, a lot of a lot of women will just be repulsed if their husband wanted to do something. They're not going to come do it, come out high water. So uh, uh, I would just you almost got to play it by by ear. What do you think about starting with a light cigar? Generally, a woman who wants to try a cigar will, will like to go into a, a Olivia a flavored uh, cigar or something like that for the first one. And, she, and and if she enjoys it, she'll gravitate over to a non-flavored cigar. Uh, and I, I think, you know, if she has an inclination to really try it and want to try it, uh, she'll gravitate from uh, the uh, CAO flavored uh, and some of those into a regular cigar. What um, cigars might you tell the men here it's holiday time? And if you're in Lexington, Kentucky, even come to Lexington, Kentucky zone, you got to come to Dale's place at 137 East Main Street in Lexington and uh, help him get some of those Christmas gifts going for you. I mean, there's other stuff than cigars here, a whole bunch. You might think it was uh, one of the old Western auto stores or something with yeah, everything going on. I feel that way sometimes. <laughs> well, it's a great store. You have a fabulous place here. Something for people to read. I mean, you've just got gifts of all kinds here. It's a beautiful thing. Well, the, the great thing about it is that a, uh, a husband can bring his wife in and she won't mind because she can browse in the gifts or the magazines or the paperbacks and, and uh, or greeting cards and, and uh, occupy herself while he's in you in the humidor picking out a uh, selection of cigars, you know, normally she starts pacing and are you done yet? Are you done yet? But we don't hit that here because she could get occupied in something else and be happy with it. So, Well, do you have any cigars in mind that you might recommend to men that are natural cigars, uh, perhaps a size, a style, uh, uh, if you want, a brand? If you guys who have these brands he's about to name, you know, we haven't taken any money from you. If you ever want to drop us a mill or two, we might talk to you about that, but we'll catch up later. <laughs> Go to our borntobefired.com uh, website. We've got a contact tab, uh, and you can just easily say we want to give you a couple names. So go ahead, Dad, tell me about it. I, a lot of the uh, people that we get in are, that are novice uh, are UK students. And uh, so they've got a limited budget, and so looking at it and making it a recommendation from that standpoint, uh, I will go into something that's good and inexpensive and it's easy to find out where their taste is uh, by their reaction to it. And, I, and usually we'll recommend a uh, core just because the price is right and uh, uh, it's a good cigar. Uh, and there's a number of shapes, uh, seven different shapes, so they can. it's easy to uh, uh, find a shape they like. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but we'll work off that. I, I try to get a benchmark of where the customer's at rather than recommending what I want. What would you say is the next cigar up to go through away from the quorum? Uh, I'd move them over to a uh, uh, another benchmark cigar for us is uh, Fuente 858 uh, because you, we carry it in the Sun Grown, Maduro, uh, Natural, and the Claro. And that way you can also kind of educate them on the various wrappers. So that'll, that'll get them started on another whole event uh, of different wrappers. Uh, now we're not talking about Christmas pageant here. We're talking <laughs> about the outer leaf of a cigar. How do you right. explain a wrapper to these folks? Uh, and well, I don't mean, you know, you have music. The, <laughs> you have the uh, filler, the binder, and then the wrapper. The binder is what holds the, the body of the cigar together. So you, the wrapper is a cosmetic leaf as thin as a piece of tissue paper that's simply put on the cigar to make it look pretty. Uh, so if you look at it from that standpoint, but all the, you know, this always throws me. I've never, all the master blenders will say that 65% of the taste comes from that binder from, for, or from the, uh, from the wrapper. Mm -hmm. Do you, I, you know, and they say, well, take the, the wrap, just cut the wrapper off and smoke the cigar with just a binder and, and see if it isn't different. And, and, you know, they're the experts. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> well. How many years you been selling and smoking cigars? Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. Yeah, got me baked. <laughs> My gosh, you know what? People need to come to your store. That's oh a, yes, they do, and get educated. Well, we'll really work with the individual. I mean, you know, there's, there's nothing more more than I like in, in uh, trying to, to educate the customer, so that he can come back there and be knowledgeable enough to, to make his own selections. 
uh, I really take umbage with uh, uh, tobacconists who are pushing a specific brand or, or uh, you know, rather than trying to find out what the customer likes. Because I, I think in the long run, you lose the customer if you do that. Uh, try to find out what the customer's smoking and what he likes. And taste is all over. I mean, you know, a guy can tell you he wants a mild cigar, and I'd say, well, what was the last mild cigar you smoked that you liked? In an unnamed name of a brand that, that, in my opinion, is one of the strongest cigars back there. So, how do you explain it? Hey, you know what I say? That boy fired yeah. himself, yeah. convinced himself that he was smoking a mild cigar when he was really smoking a cigar that somebody better have some draining wheels on if they had never smoked it before. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all you can say is uh, if you think that's mild, you don't have to worry. Almost everything in here is mild. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of women and cigars, this is a family business. You've got a daughter that's in the business. Yeah, uh, my daughter actually maintains, does the buying. And literally man, lives back here in the cigar room. So she and I know she went to Vegas for the big old show. Oh yeah, yeah, she, oh, yeah. She's been going to those for uh, probably thirty-five years. Thirty-five years, and you she know, was about that tall. If, if you did <laughs> not have so many customers lined up tonight, uh, she would have been able to join us. I'm sorry, y'all didn't see her. She's a delightful young lady. Uh, knows her cigars, so you know. If Dale's busy, you can always stop and talk to D. D will fill you in. <laughs> D will fill you in. So, since you've been smoking cigars and being around cigars for 58 years, you understand the born to be fire lifestyle. Oh, yes. And yes, therapy. Yes, yes. And uh, so, what would you suggest to people in order to embrace life more and, and how to encourage them to live the born to be fire lifestyle? What suggestions might you have? Oh, after uh, after a uh, uh, good meal at home, just grab the old easy chair and uh, the ashtray and, and uh, maybe imbibe a, a wee bit of, of the beverage that you choose and uh, take one or two sips and then light it up and uh, sit back and enjoy it. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> born to be fired. Absolutely. It's well, the only way. Dale, we are very happy that you took the time with us today. Uh, you know, I've been in and out of your store many times. I love your place. Thank you. And uh, you and your daughter are fabulous. And uh, we've had some good times. And y'all, make sure you come to Dale's store. In fact, he knows the born to be fired lifestyle. You know, some people say, hey, wear a t-shirt. Put it on your chest. So, with that in mind, Dale, we got to fly the banner. There, grab one side of it. Absolutely. Remember, y'all, fire.